really neat. I like that stuff behind you. Is that fun? Fun? Oh, that's yeah. great. Just the. <laughs> it's probably okay because it's a good 15 minutes long. After you wardrobe and <laughs> sets and <laughs> horses <laughs> and <laughs> women. Okay. It's, uh, it's like amazing. Yeah, okay. okay. Will Smith, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing terrific. You're Anna. looking so beautiful today. Aren't you sweet? <laughs> we only have five minutes. We don't have time for compliments. <laughs> no, no, time, no time for the nice things. <laughs> <laughs> no. I have to tell you, I enjoyed this movie. Well, I had so you. much fun with it. Thank you. I love all the gadgets and mm -hmm. all the costumes and disguises and everything. Thank funny, you, thank you. funny, very entertaining stuff. You know, some of the best people in the world worked on this film. You know, Bo Welsh doing all of the the, the set design and and uh, Rick Baker with the the makeup effects and. I just think that the, the cast, we had a, a great time working on it, and usually when you have fun, you know, good things come out of having fun, but it's just, it's just really big. Barry Sonnenfeld did a great job. It's different, you know, the, the, from sitting in the theater, the, the least of, that you get out of the experience is something you've never seen before. You know, no one's going to say, oh, well, that's just like something else. This movie is definitely unique. <laughs> <laughs> of all the gadgets, which mm -hmm. one did you like the best? I love the concept of the train. I love the, that, that there's a train that was designed, and that was like the, the, the focal point of the original television show, and I love that we maintain that. And, the, the and it really moves. And it really moves, absolutely. Yeah. You know? And I just think that it's 1869, but there's really wonderful special effects, but it's special effects that aren't modern day special effects. It's special effects that are designed with the technology that existed in 1869. Everything is gears and pulleys and hydraulics and I just think that, that, that it's just been an, an incredible visual experience with these, with these uh, technical designs. When you were on the platform underneath the train, after you have mm -hmm. fallen through the floor of the train. Oh, yeah, that was real. <laughs> now, you're under there, mm -hmm. and the train is moving. Absolutely. That was, very, that, that was probably the, the scariest stunt of all, being under there, under a moving train. And we're under there, and I'm sitting, and I'm looking, and the tracks are going by, and I'm like, this isn't really smart. This is, this, you know, I consider myself to be a smart man. This was a really dumb idea. But, you know, they had us strapped in, and, and, and uh, I guess the actual, the, the scarier one under the train was the going back and forth on the, on the rubber rope because, you know, I, I did that for real. And Barry Sonnenfeld was saying, no, no, we can have someone else do it. And I'm like, no, Baz, it's cool. You know, it's checked, and, it, you know, it's, it's safe. So I'll give it a shot. And doing that under the train, was that was, that was probably the, the scariest one. But it looks real. You can tell that it's me. You can tell it's not a special effect. Was it right after that that you punched Barry and knocked him out? <laughs> no, see, <laughs> he told Barry, me about that. Barry, like, for, <laughs> like, Barry has never been in a fist fight in his life. And he's just amazed that that I've been in fist fights. I'm like, Barry, yeah, you're growing up, you know, kids start something, you get in a fist fight. So he brings boxing gloves and headgear onto the set and he wants to play around and, and, and box and everything. So he's throwing, so I thought he was gonna duck. You know, I had no idea that he would just stand there because I was, you know, I threw a, a punch out there and he like didn't move at all. <laughs> you know, you, you expect somebody to duck or turn or something and he didn't do anything. But I pulled it a little bit. It wasn't as big as he made it. <laughs> In other words, you could have really done some damage. Yeah, you know, I was, you expected to hit the arm or something, but he kind of just, <laughs> just, like, Barry, duck or something. I'm just standing there. Because I never saw it coming. <laughs> I must ask you one more question. Mm -hmm. Al Gore mm -hmm. has declared for president. Uh-oh. Now, are you a pres presidential candidate? Mm -hmm. Let me say that right. Mm -hmm. Al Gore has declared as a presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. Now, are you going to go around there and get up on the stage and do another rap number with him? <laughs> I pay, I pay <laughs> big money to see that. Big no, money. That was fun. What was that? The, uh, the, the Disney inaugural celebration. 
uh, where I did the the rap with with Al Gore. That was that was. I don't think he's going to be doing too much more rapping. I think you know his rap career is behind him now. When he was the vice president, you know it was cool. He was working on his little rap thing. You know, in case the whole politics thing didn't work out, you know he could go into hip hop. So, but I think, I think sure he could. You know, I think he's pretty secure in, in 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 his position now. What what song did you all do? No, we, yeah, I made one up. We were making it up. They just they played music, and I'd like made something up with our names in it and all of that. In in rap, that's called freestyling. <laughs> okay. We just we freestyled a little bit. <laughs> well, you're always such fun. Thank you, thank Congratulations you. Congratulations again you so on much. Wild Wild West. <laughs> fun, fun time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Please give my best to Jada. Oh, yes, no, I guess we'll celebrate on Monday. Oh. Or they'll just ignore me, my family. I don't know what, I they, don't think I don't know so. what they have planned. <laughs> I don't think so. Kevin, it's good to see you as always. You one of my always. favorite people. Thank you. you know, I think if they said uh, there's a movie and Kevin Klein's going to read the yellow page, yellow pages or the cartoons, I would probably say, I'll be there. You know? Actually, that's I, did they cut the scene where I read the yellow pages <laughs> in this movie? That was the challenge. That's when I. That's the scene. I said, Nah, that I want to do. <laughs> I think they cut it though. Well, Thank you. that's movies kind. for you. <laughs> yes, they always cut your best scene. <laughs> yeah, and my character invented the yellow pages, but that whole sequence got cut. Too bad. <laughs> it also in the director's the cut. Okay, let, me, let me jump in for a second. We may have technical problems. Oh, okay. Oh, good. Okay. So I can start over. And stop the background. Okay, we are stopping. Back it. I just yeah. held it in my hand. I'm just walking up Will's arm. It's just a nice little furry. Yeah, you right. can't think of it as a spider. Think of it as a little furry creature, <laughs> which it is. This has got a fan on in the TV. That's the fan. Yeah. Can I get another uh, gin and tonic, please? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, water. <laughs> what was it? Bring it down a little. <laughs> no, it was water. It was water. <laughs> water or cappuccino? <laughs> like the old days. Where of is that? <laughs> Throw me a freaking bone here, oh, people. <laughs> Oh, the Dennis Quaid used to drink vodka tonic in the <laughs> afternoon. Water down smashed. a cappuccino on the way. That'll do it. You Thank you it. very much. This was back in his drinking days. He'd be smashed by a cappuccino. Was it a good smash? Was it smashed like that well, made him articulate? You know, he used to be so weird. He would do this. He'd say, well, you know, and he's clear out of frame. All right, guys, thank you. <laughs> Dennis. Well, that must have made it. Oh, it Different. was insane. Really it was insane. Oh, and then he, you know. That's all right. Thank you. Thank you. Is there sugar? Uh, I'll get your sugar. Yeah. <laughs> Before it was <laughs> over? So we're done. Well, no, just in the course of talking. Oh, just he, kind of he, of he, you know, I mean, oh, he right. just <laughs> jump. He was constantly jumping out of frame. Yeah. He's a wonderful. Did, did you see but him But he doesn't do that anymore. Yeah. Yeah, no, no I got to know him a little yeah. when I was working with Meg Ryan, of course. No, he's French great Shears. now. No, he's he's wonderful. wonderful. I didn't know but, he was. But those were in his drinking days. <laughs> and we Salad all said, days. you know, why do you bring him <laughs> vodka? And yeah, why do you keep going wrong? You know, why? well, that's what he wants. Thank you. Know? Either that or bloody we Marys. Want him to be happy. I said, well, then just put a tiny. The Virgin Mary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Virgin. You know, he's not going to know. <laughs> okay. Good? It was pretty funny. All right. There were plenty of Dennis Quaid interviews. That I forgot. All right, as you were. Go ahead, Bonnie. <laughs> All right, we're starting from the top. New, to new time. Are we starting from the top? You have to. Okay, have to. Stand by okay. We're starting from the top. Hold God on damn it. <laughs> I want to do that over again. I want another take. <clears throat> okay, Bobby, go ahead. All Kevin, right. I'll push you around. Well, Kevin Klein, so good to see you good again. Good to see you. Always, yeah. always. You, I've told you this. I'm a big Kevin Klein fan. You always say that. It's true. One it, of these days you're going to show up and say, you know, I used to be a, your biggest fan, <laughs> and now your work is beginning to grate. Uh, I can't watch you anymore. You annoy me. But it's not today. No, it's certainly not today. Good. I'm delighted to hear that. You're marvelous in this. Thank Just you. marvelous. Thank you're you. You're the gadget man. The gadget man. Yeah. Yes. Now, of all the gadgets, were you more fond of one than, than another? Gosh, uh, I'm sure I must have been. 
The bicycle, did you like the bicycle? That was fun. It was a real bicycle. I mean, that's not a computerized bicycle. No, no, I was actually, yeah, I was on a bicycle <laughs> okay. with these big flames coming out. I said, I'd watch it with your foot. Don't put your foot there. You, you know, it'll burn off. Um, there were, uh, to me, every ga the fun thing, which what you don't see, I mean, the, you could do a whole other movie of outtakes, and that's when the gadgets didn't work, because invariably there would be a take where the gadget, you know, something would fly out of my arm, but it would only come halfway out or go too far or go out that way. And then you had to deal with that of, you know, well, I'm still working out the kinks here. Um, um, but, uh, and that's close to reality. That's the reality I know, because none of my gadgets at home work. Uh, <clears throat> they all misfire. And you like gadgets? Though? I hate gadgets. I hate, I hate technology. I hate, I hate the misuse of technology. I, I think there's a, a tendency in our culture to use the technology. Well, we've got the technology. You know, we can put a little chip in, in uh, we can put a voice on, the, on a chip and put it in the back of a taxi cab. Have you been to New York oh, recently? Oh, yes. Oh, please. Well, I mean, you know, or these, these robotic voices when you call information and you get James Earl Jones, saying, welcome to 9X. And, and, uh, it, it's, well, we've got the technology, let's use it and put millions and millions of people out of work. Although you put millions and millions of people to work making these little chips. But the, the, the philosophy of we've got it, let's use it, naturally leads to misuse. And of course, our, uh, Dr. Arliss Loveless is living proof of the misuse of technology. Let's, let's, let's take over the world. We've got the technology. Let's do it. What about the magnetic collar? Was mm. that as uncomfortable as it looks? More so. Really uncomfortable. How'd they get those things on and off? Oh, well, usually by pinch, they, they came together in such a way that they could take parts of your neck and just sort of, they were, they were, they were more painful to put on, I think, than to wear. Because. And it, they were metal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, no, but sometimes, two, it took two people and sometimes the right side couldn't see what the left side was doing. And one time they, it kind of hooked together with a piece of my neck in it. It was like, yeah! <laughs> and, and two people, and they didn't know it was on your side, either. they had to like start unscrewing things. It was like, meanwhile, I'm being terminally pinched. But I'm not complaining. That's why they pay actors. But those people weren't on the film after that. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, it was, you know, I suffered, but it was for art. Running through the cornfield, that's, there's a lot of art there. <laughs> that was art, yes. That was fun, though, because um, it was just, just run for your life, you know, and try not to let the, the corn stalks slice your face up. And, and um, those, those kind of physical challenges of let's just now jump off the thing, and, but don't jump too far or you'll kill yourself, and don't jump too far because there's this thing coming and it'll cut your head off. And those make you just focus in a way where you can forget about acting and something pure happens, something just dealing with the elements. And I, I, I'm running through the cornfield was one of those days. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I did, I did. <laughs> this is great fun to watch. Good. Yeah. Good. Well, Kevin, I hope we see you again um, in I the think near future. If I ever work again, uh, <laughs> okay. after this movie, I'll, I'll probably end up here and, and talking about it. I, Whatever it is. I tell you again, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I had a great time. With I'm this so time. glad. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Good to see you. <laughs> Thanks, Bobby. No. Okay, we're rolling. Very good. Kenneth, it is so nice to see you again. Nice to see you. We go back to Henry V. I do. You came to Dallas. Indeed. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. and I've been a terrific fan of yours ever since. I got to tell you, this is about the wildest thing you've ever done. Yeah, <laughs> it is wild. <laughs> I didn't, uh, yeah, on that trip, my very first trip around America, actually, where we first met in Dallas uh, promoting Henry V, little did I know that uh, 10 years later I would be the, the brilliant and diabolical Dr. Loveless, <laughs> a legless man taking over America and giving it back to all its original owners. Uh, <laughs> but it was such fun to do. I love Barry Sommerfeld's work. and. And he, you know, does a wonderful new take on the famous TV show and gave us all a lot of license to, to play and have fun. 
Did you know this TV show in England? I knew of it. I hadn't seen it. Um, I knew that people uh, were real devotees uh, of it and that, that it was hugely successful over here, much loved and still plays. Um, but w when I knew I was going to do this, I asked Barry whether he felt I should see the original. He said, I don't think so because uh, A, Loveless will be very different and this whole movie is going to be very different. It's you know, already very different to have Will in it and Kevin. And So we decided to just go with the freshness of Barry's approach. But I look forward to seeing it now. I'd be very intrigued to see it now. Of course, you're legless, mm. and I know years ago before we had computers, they used to have to bend the legs up underneath the people, and mm. it's, it's a wonder that they ever walked again. Yeah, it's Now, how did they do it for you? Well, there was a little bit of that going on. Uh, I mean, suddenly, I, there was uh, Jose Ferrer in, uh, uh, playing Toulouse Lautrec in that film uh, in the <laughs> 50s. Uh, that was quite uncomfortable, I must say, because they screwed the lower half of my body into the, this uh, metal contraption, which was supposed to represent the mechanical entrails that my torso is fed into as Loveless. Um, so it was definitely a little uncomfortable. The rest of it was done with a bit of movie magic, blue screens and um, motion control cameras and things that uh, uh, those little buttons produce. Um, and it's very convincing in the end and very alarming when I saw the movie. I thought, crikey, it's really, that is... And it's very odd, you know, it's a, it's a very good look for a villain. It's, it's very uncomfortable to see him, uh, but also completely compelling. And uh, so it took a while to get used to the fact that you can't have your feet in the ground and feel whatever sort of solidity it, it's, uh, you know, the privilege to feel if you're able-bodied. Um, but every bit of setting that I appeared in is covered in my tarantula motifs and my spider imagery and and uh, so you were always aware of Lovelace's identity and his sense of power so that was a, a very enjoyable thing to play around with. Did you have any idea, I, I'm sure you saw drawings, but did you have any idea what that tarantula would look like when it was finished on the screen? We did see some drawings but it's pretty hard to imagine as sometimes you're acting to a piece of tape on a, on a lighting stand and they say oh and that's where the huge thing comes over the hill and now it's moving towards you and, and Barry shows you some drawings and he gets very excited about, about what will eventually be there but the, having seen the film for the first time it, we had no idea of the sort of size of it, the massivity of that tarantula and of all of uh, uh, Lovelace's armory. He has all this cool stuff. He's got tanks and trains that do weird things and go up on rails and turn around and hide things in them and have got things coming out of the walls and it's gadget central. Uh, some of which we saw on a set and some of which is a treat in the movie. Your wheelchair is pretty spectacular. Steam powered? Steam powered. Bo Walsh, who did this wonderful uh, design for the movie, uh, manages to make all the technology in it look this combination of a seeming modern and yet you can believe it would be just about possible for some crazy inventor to have done. It's a bit sort of Jules Verne like, you know, um, and it was very, very uh, convincing and it, it, it was, as soon as you saw it, as soon as I walked on and saw it for the first time and got into it for the first time, it, did, it really gave me a strong sense of the character. Um, and it's very particular and very personalized. Everything about what Loveless had was very, very personalized. The detail in all the sets and the costumes and the hair and the facial hair and his sort of dandyish look, all of it was so particular that it felt, for all that this is a big sort of fantasy adventure, it felt very real. And so it was, a, you know, very um, relaxing to play. Could you actually m manipulate the wheelchair yourself? I did. I became like a Formula One um, steam-powered wheelchair <laughs> driver. Uh, if there'd been a, if there'd been a, like a, a, a Daytona 500 for steam-powered wheelchairs, <laughs> I think I could have been in there. And it, and it really, uh, it, well, did it operate electronically or how did it? it electrically, based on electrics, but uh, then sort of converted to to what appeared to be um, steam power and sort of influenced by old. Rail di railroad designs, rail car designs, and uh, all of it incredibly impressive and fun to play around in. Kids would love it. Oh, I loved it. I, I kept thinking, I'd like to try that. Yeah, it is fun. <laughs> Everybody got in it. I can't grow the, the beard, though. You Don't know. do that. Don't ever do that. <laughs> Kenneth, it's wonderful to see you again, and you're an absolute marvelous hoot in this thing. Thank you very much. Such fun. Thank such you. fun. Thank Thanks you. Sure. Very nice to see you again. <laughs> Yes. Isn't it silk and cashmere? Yes, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Selma, good to see you again. Good to see you too. It's been a while, but I'm delighted to see you in this film. Thank you. I don't know if it was fun for you to make it, but it's great fun to watch. Oh, it was so much fun to make it. How can it not be fun with this group of um, 
crazy people I was put together with. They're so wonderful. Would they play jokes on you? Yes. Like what? You really want me to tell you? Well, if it's clean and we can put it on the air. If I can't put it on the air, you can tell me later. It's sort of clean. All right. I think we can put it on the okay. air. Okay. They, the first scene that I was going to do, I have to turn around and you see part of my butt. But I was embarrassed. That's the night shirt thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And I didn't, I was embarrassed and I said, you have, they have to close their eyes when I turn around because I didn't know them very well. And I was very shy about it. And then the director's like, no, 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 you have to do it. And they're very serious, right? And, you know, we have to get it, like, on the first take. I don't want to, to waste time doing this. But he was joking. I didn't know. And then so I have to come out, say my lines, and then when I turn around, you see a little bit of my butt accidentally. And when I came out, they were mooning me. <laughs> Will and Kevin. And I didn't blink, and I had to look at them, <laughs> pretending it was their face because the camera is only on me. So, and I had said all my lines, and then I look at the other one, and said all my lines with a straight face, and then I turned around, and then I felt so much better. <laughs> <laughs> I had to hold a laugh. <laughs> it's a cute scene, it really is. It is a cute scene. <laughs> they were very, very funny to do that. One of the outfits you wear, though, looks like a torture chamber, the bustier thing. Yes. Was it kind of? It was a torture chamber. And I wasn't even too strict because I didn't pull it so hard so that I could be comfortable for the, for the film. But one day I ate a lot and I said to the girl, don't tighten it at all. Just make it blue so that I can move on it. They won't know. And then I come out and Barry's like, let me see the camera. Move it up. And he's looking like this. And he looks at me. And I said, OK, I did tighten the corset. <laughs> I'll go back and tighten it now. He noticed it. It was amazing. Directors are like that, aren't yes. they? Yes. I want to get something straight. Now, in the movie, uh, we don't see spiders crawling all over you. No. But is it only in the video? Only in the video. Because the theme of the villain, whose name is Loveless, who's played by Kenneth Branagh, um, is a tarantula. He has tarantulas everywhere. And so they decided for the video to put tarantulas on me. Brilliant idea, huh? And then I had to bear it. And then they didn't tell me they were going to do this when they told, asked me if I wanted to do the video. And then there I was, and there I am again with the tarantulas. I did it with the snakes before, and it was the same torturer, it was the same handler that handled the snake in From Dust Till Dawn, that just happened to be the one that handled the tarantulas, How Jules. about that? <laughs> so when I see that guy next time, I'll just run. <laughs> I know he's bad news. <laughs> and they're real tarantulas, they're not They're real fake. tarantulas, yes, and it was a real snake. I'm a brave girl. You are. And that's why they pay you people big money. Yes. <laughs> you earn Not it. Not for the video, but <laughs> it was for Will. I love him so much, I would even take tarantulas on me because he's such a wonderful guy. Makes me wonder, you know, what the next critter is that they're going to throw at you. That's what I said. I mean, they're gonna, next movie, they're going to decide they need a Scorpio on my nose or something. <laughs> Enough with the cre <laughs> pre creatures crawling on me. In this movie, what was your favorite gadget? The train. The tra I mean, it's a gadget full of gadgets, but it's a funny one. And did the trap door really open in the train? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it, w it all really did happen. You know, Will went one down with the thing, and I really, uh, they threw me into the, chair from the ceiling. I mean, it sounds silly, but when you see the movie, you'll understand what, what I'm talking about. And uh, I, I did my own stunt on that one. All right. Very good. Well, Selma, thanks for your time Thank today. You it's much. wonderful to see you. You're looking gorgeous, as Thank always. You. And uh, I, I just had a great time with this movie. So did I. I hope everybody else that comes and sees it does. Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope it's worth it, too. Seeing it.